Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010, Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. Now, in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the questions on the second practice test for Chapter 6, which is on sampling distributions. The first question on this test is, the central limit theorem states that the shape of a sampling distribution becomes closer to what shape as the number of sample means in the distribution increases? And the choices are A, uniform, B, skewed, C, bimodal, or D, normal. Uh, the answer on this one is normal. Now, uniform means totally flat, and that uh, doesn't happen with the central limit theorem. Skewed, um, no, it actually, because it goes to normal, it's, it's uh, symmetrical. And bimodal, not at all. It becomes a unimodal symmetrical bell curve. And here again, We've seen this illustration before, but here's the process. You see in the, the top left of these is a very funny looking uh, distribution with several peaks. And then the other ones are histograms as you get larger and larger samples and more and more of them. Until finally you get at the bottom right and you see we have what really looks a lot like a normal distribution. That's what happens with the central limit theorem. The second question is if the population mean for a distribution is 150 and the standard deviation is 20, then what is the z-score for a sample of 100 people with an average score of 153? Choices are 3, 0 0.15, 1.5, and 50. The answer to this one is C, 1.5. Let's take a look how that works. This is a two-step process. We've talked about it before. And again, I, if I were on a, a chalkboard, I would use the Greek characters, the mu and the sigma and stuff like that. But because of the program that I'm in right here, I'm using uh, Latin letters. But you should be able to follow it all. SE is the standard error, and it's helpful to solve for that first. And the standard error is equal to the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, and that's N. So in this case, the standard deviation is 20, and it's divided by the square root of 100. Uh, so that's 20 divided by 10 is equal to 2. So 2 is the standard error. And then what we do is we stick that into the formula for z-scores, which can be written here as uh, m sub s, that's the mean of the sample, minus m sub p, the mean of the population. We get the difference between those two, and then we divide that by the standard error, which is 2 we got a second ago. So we end up putting in 153, the mean for the sample, minus 150, the mean for the population, divided by 2, is equal to 3 divided by 2, and that's equal to 1.5. So what it means is that the sample is one and a half standard errors above the population mean. All right, number three. If a person were to create a sampling distribution for the sample standard deviations, then the mean of that distribution would be equal to what? A, the mean of the original distribution, B, the standard deviation of the original distribution, C, the square root of the standard deviation of the original distribution, or D, it just can't be calculated without additional information. Well, this is a really unusual question. Um, and the answer is that the mean of the distribution of sample standard deviations would be equal to the standard deviation of the original distribution. That is, when you make a sampling distribution, it's centered around the population value of whatever statistic you're making. If you were doing the interquartile range, the mean of your sampling distribution of the interquartile range would be equal to the interquartile range of the original population. So let's take a quick look at how this works. Um, now you see we've got this formula here on the bottom. Now it's just asserting it and it says mu sub zero, excuse me, mu sub sigma. So that's the population mean of the standard deviation distribution is equal to sigma sub x. And that is um, the uh, standard deviation of the original uh, distribution. And on the right here, I actually calculated an example of this. On the top is a, uh, is a skewed distribution, but you can see there's two numbers there. The first is that the mean is 76, and that the standard deviation of that population that's on the top is 15.5. On the bottom, um, I got uh, 10,000 samples of, of 50 each, so that's an n, is, n of 50. And what you see is it's a nice normal distribution, because that's something that the central limit theorem says would happen. And the mean of that distribution is right around 15.4, which is very close to the standard deviation of the distribution up on top. So that's how that works. 
Number four, the equation for the standard error of a sampling distribution is either a mu divided by the square root of n minus one, or b sigma divided by n minus one, or c uh, mu divided by sigma, or d sigma divided by the square root of n. So you got to be up on your Greek on this one. And the answer is d. It's sigma divided by n. So sigma is the population standard deviation and it's divided by the square root of n, or the square root of the sample size. And again, here's how it works. What I've done here, uh, this is from the PowerPoint where I started with a U-shaped distribution. But the important thing is I, sh I show four versions. The first one is I'm taking samples of one at a time. Now when you do one, you end up with a distribution that looks exactly like the original. So the mean is three, and the standard deviation of the original distribution is 1.7. Uh, 1.70, and I divide that by the square root of 1, which of course is 1, and I end up with a standard error of 1.7, because this first row, if you're only taking one at a time, the sampling distribution is identical to the original population. On the other hand, if I take two at a time, that's the second row, I have the same mean, but now I'm dividing the standard deviation by the square root of 2, and it becomes, uh, which is 1.414 dot dot dot, and that equals 1.20. So you can see the standard error just got smaller, went from 1.7 to 1.2. If I double the sample size again and I go to 4, I still have a mean of 3 and the standard deviation is 1.70, the original standard deviation, divided by the square root of 4, which is 2. And so now the standard error is 0 0.85, so you can see it's, gotten, it's getting a lot smaller. Um, and then if I go all the way up to a sample of 25, again, the mean stays at 3 and the standard deviation is 1.70 divided by the square root of 25. And in this case, that, that's 5 by the way. And in this case, the standard error is equal to 0 0.34. So you can see how it's getting smaller as the sample size gets larger. Um, that's how it works. All right, number four. If a population has a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of 8, what would be the z-score for a sample of 16 people with a mean of 46? And the choices are 4, 6, 3, and 2. The answer is 3. Let's, let's see why. Um, I'm going to work through the equation the same way I did with other ones. I'm going to start by figuring out the standard error. That's the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size n. So we have 8 divided by the square root of 16, which is 4. So 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2. So we again have a standard error of 2. We had that in the, the last one we did. And then the z-score is the mean of the sample minus the mean of the population divided by the standard error. In this case, it's 46, that's the mean of the sample, minus 40, the mean of the population, divided by the standard error of 2. So that's uh, 46 minus 40 is 6, divide that by 2, and the answer is 3. So what this tells us is that the sample is three standard errors above the population mean, which truthfully is an extraordinary amount. When you're looking at the raw data and it's, you know, a mean of 46, compared to a population mean of 40 standard deviation of 8, it feels like it's less than one standard deviation, but because uh, samples are more stable than individuals, and the larger the sample, the more stable it is, any deviation becomes a bigger deal, and that's exactly what's happening right here.